So I'm working on this Aston Martin DBS Superleggera, probably the most beautiful car on earth. And on top of this car, on top of the hood, you'll have these holes here, I guess. This is where the heat comes out or something like that. I'm going to show you how you can make those holes properly. I'm going to show you how I made them in this situation right here. And by the way, guys, if you want to see the full tutorial, the full course for how I put together what I have so far and how I'm going to finish this entire car, I got that on Patreon. So if you want to see everything step by step broken down from scratch, it's on my Patreon page. Now, we're going to start with this hood right here. And I have this low poly version right here. And this stuff is pretty easy to make. If you guys want, I'll make some more videos about how you can make car hoods and stuff like that. Just let me know. But the problem here is that we don't have enough polygons. Now, usually you want to try to keep as few polygons as you can. Not because you're doing this for a video game. Well, if you're doing it for a video game, then of course, it's going to be easier to process. But while you're working, you want to have less polygons because it's going to be easier to make major changes to the shape of the vehicle, right? If you have 3 million fucking polygons on your vehicle, imagine trying to change the shape of this curve right here. Look how many fucking vertices we have right now. So that's not going to work. But the problem is that in this case, we don't have enough polygons to create the feature that we want to have here. So what you do in this case is you duplicate this just so you have a backup, right? You duplicate it. So at any time, if you fuck something up, you can go back to the previous model where you had low, uh, where you had less polygons and you can use that. You can start from there. So it's like a quick save. Look how many I got. I got a bunch of quick saves over here. So let's just hide everything that we don't need. And then on this version, we're going to apply one level of subdivision surface because we're ready to do that. I'm pretty much finished with this model. I know that I'm not gonna, really going to have to change anything here. Now we can start doing the cutting. So let's go over here. Let me activate my screencast key so you guys can see what I'm doing. And it looks like I also hid my blueprints, which I wasn't supposed to do. So let me select everything which I'm trying to keep here. Blueprints and the model that I'm working on. Invert selection. And then I'm going to hide everything else. So we bring this down. Now look. Here's how we're going to start this. We're first going to have to define these white lines here. You see there's these white lines in the blueprint. And I got this blueprint by just Googling. Aston Martin DBS Superleggera blueprint. I definitely did not use a watermark remover. So definitely do not do that. Now, we have to define these lines right here. And the way to do that is we're going to start from over here. We're going to start with these vertices. We're just going to move them down a little bit. Okay, we move this inwards a little bit. That's going to be this little corner. Then we have to use K to start our knife cut. And guys, I'm not trying to keep perfect topology here. Perfect topology technically means no triangles, nothing. I'm okay with using, using triangles. In this case, triangles aren't going to give us any problems. As long as they don't give us shading artifacts, it's totally fine to have some triangles here. So we make a knife cut. And I would say that it would be a waste of time to try to do this with quads only because it would take so much fucking time. It would make it so much harder and it wouldn't really serve any purpose other than just you sticking to your principles of working quads only. Fuck that shit today, okay? So we start this knife cut right here. And then we use another knife cut, which we're going to bring all the way up here to the top, to the end of this line here. And over here on this side, we can just use this geometry, which we already have. We can slide that to the side just a little bit, or maybe we can use, uh, make a knife cut, but we're going to get rid of the geometry that we had from before. So we can bring this knife cut down to around here somewhere and then slide the remaining geometry or the geometry out of before into that geometry, which we just created with the knife cut. And then we merge by distance. I got my shortcut shift W for that. So now we have to get rid of these little triangles so we can slide this inwards. Okay. You just kind of bring them together. Notice how I'm just sliding everything with double G. I'm not moving anything with G because that's going to change the shape of the surface. If I move it, it moves in a different direction, right? But if I slide it with double G, it's always going to follow the surface. It's going to stay on the surface. So I'm going to retain my shape. Then we have an end gone over here, which we have to get rid of. So we can slide this over to the side. We can bring this in like this. We got a couple of triangles here, but that's all good. So now we have to select all these edges, which we just defined, or the edge segments like this, we're going to select everything down here, including these. All right, control E mark seam, and we're also going to connect them here, control E mark seam, the reason we're marking seams is so that in face select mode, we can just press L on this surface. And that's instantly going to select the entire little island. So we don't have to go manually trying to select it. Then we place the 3d cursor over at the top before we select it, then we select it. 3d cursors pivot point, we're going to extrude that all right, deselect this part and just scale up on the Z axis, deselect another segment, scale up a little bit further, deselect another segment, scale up a little bit further, something like this, right? It's up to you how far you want to go. It's up to you what you think is best based on the reference image. 
Now up here, we got two tiny little triangles, which is not very good. So we're just going to slide these edges up to the end as well. We can keep this one. All right. And then we can also add a loop cut here, but let's not do that just yet. For now, let's bring in our subdivision surface modifier just so this looks a little bit nicer. I'm going to show you how you can make this work without using a subdivision surface modifier also. And it's really up to you how many polygons you want to have. I'm not trying to keep low poly because this is not a game model. I'm just trying to make it pretty so I can make renders, animations, and shit like that. So I don't care about having 6 million polygons. But if you guys are gamers, if you want to make this for a fucking video game or something, you can do that. You're not going to use as much subdivision surface as I am. You're going to dissolve a lot of these edge segments here if you want to optimize this. But I'm not going to do any of that. So now, now that we brought this down a little bit, now we have to define this hole on the inside. And how do you do that? So the way this shape works is you take these edges from the inside, you're going to slide them inwards a little bit like this. Okay. Also these here, we're going to slide them inwards. Or maybe we can just make a line here with J, we can join these vertices here with J and slide them to the end. That way we make sure it's a straight line. Maybe we can do it all the way to the end here since we're already going that far. So we join this with J, we slide these inwards. Then we slide this vertex up a little bit. We do the same thing over here. We can join it with J with this triangle over here at the top. We slide some vertices inwards. We join them. So there we go. Now we created this little inner area. Let's just make sure that everything's working properly. Okay, subdivision surface. Everything looks pretty cute. Now check this out. Before we continue, you're going to notice that this part over here might look kind of shitty. All right, so let's just check out what's happening up here. Maybe you want to use a different math cap. So notice how I switched to my math cap and my viewport shading because I don't want to use a default studio shit because I can't see anything. I can't see how the light's reflecting off the surface. So I can't really see my imperfections, my dents, but if you switch to matte cap and use the green one or the red one, now you can clearly see when there's some sort of deformation going on. Like over here, for example, we know we got a problem because we can see how the light reflects. There's something going on there. So here we want to fix this because we can see it's kind of a little bit sharper than it should be. So we might just want to select a couple of these edge segments here. Maybe just these three in the middle, deselect everything like this. W loop tools, relax. If you don't have your loop tools, you got to go to edit preferences, get extensions, loop tools, install, add-ons, activate your loop tools, and then you're going to have them. So you might just want to relax this a little bit just to make sure it's not sharp. And now we're almost there. So now that we cleared out this area on the inside, now we have to make another little cut here. Maybe we can also bring this vertex a little bit further inwards. So maybe we can change the shape of this line just a little bit. Bring this inwards like this. Then you make a knife cut here. Here, let's just keep a couple of triangles. And we're going to figure out later what we're going to do with this part and then just delete use your brush select tool with C to select all the vertices on the inside on the white area and just delete vertices there. We can slide this up to correct this shape a little bit. And there you go. Now we got the shape. We might have to slide some shit around a little bit. You can spend all day just messing around with these little details, just fixing stuff up. But you can see that we're almost there. You can see that this is we're we're going in the right direction. OK, so we're going to have to straighten this out a little bit better and all that. And now the last thing we have to do is get rid of this. Whatever's going on over here, we have to clear that shit up a little bit. So let's take everything on the inside of this border that we marked here with mark seams L. We select everything. Also out here, maybe we add an extra little segment here to this selection and we press I to inset. But before we confirm that, you press O for outset. And that's going to create a face segment around your selected area, which is now going to act as supporting geometry around this outline over here. Okay. And now, of course, when you do that, that's also going to give you supporting geometry up here, which might give you some problems. So you might have to push this backwards a little bit just to put them apart just so they're not too close together because you see if they're close together, right? For example, if we have two edges very close together here, you're going to notice that there is a seam. So you want to make sure that these are not too close together. Make sure that they're not causing you any problems. They don't seem to be causing us any problems now, but just make sure you don't want this to ruin your fucking model. So we have this supporting geometry. Now you might also want to add an extra edge, uh, edge loop over here on the inside either because you want supporting geometry on the inside or because you don't want to have triangles over here because when you do this, it adds a little quad here, turns the triangle here into a quad. So that's, I guess that's just to make Thomas Colin happy, perhaps. And we can also just lift this up a little bit. We slide this outwards. And there you go. See how easy that is. Now, guys, I know I might make it look easy 
uh, on my screen. Okay, when you see me do it, it might look easy, but that's because I've done this 150 billion fucking times. So for me, this is like second nature. If the first time you're trying to do something like this, it's going to take you a million attempts before you can get it right. And even now, if I'm trying to make a new hole on a different car, it takes me a couple of attempts a lot of times before I can figure out how to do it properly without fucking up the topology, without making a total mess. So just understand that this this car modeling in general is fucking hard, all right? Now, if you don't want to go high poly, if you turn off your subdivision surface modifier, you can see it looks kind of shitty, right? So you have to add a little bit more geometry. Maybe you have to slide stuff around to make this look a little bit more round. Here, we're definitely going to have to add a knife cut, which gives us a triangle. But man, if you're making a game model, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck if it's a triangle? The only time triangles might be a problem is if somebody's testing you to see if you're able to model this without using triangles which is going to be in very specific situations. Most of the time, it really doesn't fucking matter. Just use a triangle. As long as it doesn't ruin your model, it's fine, okay? So, and how are we going to do this shit without using triangles? It's going to take me six days to wire this up. Fuck that. So you slide this around a little bit just to make the corner a little bit softer, to make it look a little bit more round. Now, of course, when you look at it from this close, you can see that it's shitty, all right? But if you look at it from far away, and then if you look at it in realistic circumstances, maybe we add some sort of a light here. Well, let's just look at it in material view or something. Then we add, make this blue or some shit. I don't know. We're going to make this blue, dark purple. We reduce the roughness, damn near zero. It looks all right. For a video game, if you're driving a car in third person, it's fine. It doesn't fucking matter. But I would recommend that you still add some subdivision if you can, because you can see that when we add even just one level of subdivision surface, it looks a thousand times better. I'm going to go with two because I want to do some nice renders and shit like that. Probably some close-ups later on. So... There you go. That's how you do that, guys. If you want to see the full course, everything step by step, I'm doing this on Patreon, so you guys can go check that out. There's a link for that in the description. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see next. If you want to ask me a question, then join the Discord, or so you can follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure you subscribe to the fucking channel, too. So, see you guys around.